Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids, looking at another Spec Ops Global monthly subscription box. So let's jump into it and see what they sent us. Let's start off here looking at our knife. This is a folding kind of EDC rescue type knife from a company called RUI. So it does come with this ballistic nylon sheath that has a snap and then you can run your belt through that in the back. I'll just get this out of the way for now. Titanium coated blade, uh, stainless steel, Got that kind of drop point, clip point on the front there. Um, got a strap cutter in the back and a glass punch or window breaker there. It is a liner lock. They note in their um, their literature it's kind of got an old school feel but also a new school, kind of new, newer technology look uh, as far as like, you know, the texture and stuff, which I agree. Uh, I will note that there's no pocket clip on it, so you do have to run it actually in the sheath and I'll show you what it looks like to actually put it in there right now. Snap that down. So that's what it looks like in the sheath. Uh, it, you know, as far as a knife, it's RUI is the company. I'm not familiar with them. I did dig around on their website. Uh, it is a company from Spain that seems to supply items to military and law enforcement, etc. Definitely, it's got a lot of texture here on the top and also on the bottom as well. But it's not super aggressive. But I can see that being helpful as far as getting a hold of the knife and actually, you know, keeping control of it while you're using it. Slot back there if you want to run a lanyard through there. And uh, that's it. One cool thing I can tell you is that there, there, and down here, and then same on the other side, those little kind of whitish spots actually glow in the dark. So if you get this exposed to the light and then you drop it at night, that's a way you're more likely to actually discover the, uh, or find your find your knife. So that's cool, little bonus thing built there, uh, built into the knife there. Next up here we have this BCB cooker. And uh, it's kind of ironic because I actually had one of these sent to me um, with some of the Fire Dragon f Fuel for review, I just haven't gotten to it, and then I opened this up and thought, okay, now I got another one. Uh, super compact, you basically open it up, slide this thing out, and it's this tiny little rectangle. Put it together, you open this up, slide the little lip in, like so. And now it's ready to go. So the company BCB has been around for 100 years. Um, they have over 200 NATO approved items. And uh, you know you can see just these little innovations would be super helpful out in the field. They actually have won multiple awards for soldier technology and innovation as well. So what you basically do is you fold this thing out, put a little fuel uh, fuel cube there. It's kind of like an old school sterno, and then you put your food right or your pot right on top, of your cup right on top of it to heat it up, cook whatever you're cooking. So that's that's kind of a cool thing. Um, I do have a full fledged review of this coming from one of my buddies who's going to be doing it. So stay tuned for that in another video, and I'll um, I'll. Uh, you know, that'll be on the feed, so if you're subscribed to Everyday Tactical Vids, you'll hear about it. And I think uh, it's a cool little item. I love the fact that it's so compact. And for anybody who says, well, I'll just cook over, you know, I'll just cook over a stove that, or cook over a fire, that's great. But it is a little bit more work than you would think just to kind of get everything balanced and make sure you don't knock your pot or your pan over or whatever. So this is kind of a cool little setup, very lightweight. Next up here we have a headlamp from Petzl, and uh, if you're not familiar with Petzl, they're a, they are a French company. Started in 1975 by a well-known well um, rock climber and explorer named Fernand Petzl, and they just make great headlamps. So Petzl, Black Diamond, those are two of those kind of long-term ones. They've been used in uh, rock climbing, mountaineering, camping, backpacking, I mean just all kinds of adventure things. So you can see some of the specs here on the front on this one. It's going to give you up to 160 lumens. and. Um, it's in that green kind of OD color, so that's more of a, if you will, tactical or military type feel. And um, I'll show you some of the features uh, when I put it on here in a minute. All right, well, guess what? I was gonna shoot some video tonight as the sun's going down here of the Petzl headlamp, but unfortunately, I left it at my original location, which is about 40 minutes away. So I was shooting video about 40 minutes away, and it's still over there. Next month, when we get the July box, I'll roll in some footage of the Petzl light in use, all right? We had a couple other small items here. First, you have your uh, matches that go with your stove. Now, they do note in the little handout that they send you that they can't actually send you the fuel blocks just due to shipping issues. Um, so you can buy those pretty much anywhere. But you got your matches and you got your uh, stove there. Buy your fuel blocks and you're on. You're good to go. This has the striker on the top and on the bottom. And you can tell when you look at these, these are going to burn for a while. So watch here. We'll just do one. It's a flame, but it definitely burns more like a road flare. And they do have a little note here on this uh, container. Be careful that it's still hot even after you, uh, even after you, it burns out. The other thing here we have is 
It's GoViter, G-O-V-I-T-E-R, GoViter.com, and this is what they call Viter Energy. So essentially it's mints with caffeine in them. It does note in the uh, literature that a bunch of people, you know, people are thinking more about uh, options like this when it comes to caffeine as a supplement as opposed to just straight up coffee because coffee has side effects. One of the main ones is that you have to go to the bathroom after you drink a bunch of coffee, whereas take a uh, mint that doesn't have, uh, you know, any basically very few calories and it's not going to make you go to the bathroom yet. It still has a... Uh, so that's caffeine in it, so that can be an option for you. A few more items here. What we're looking at now are gear straps. So is that it's straps, S-T-R-A-P, and then Z at the end. So these were uh, developed in coordination with the 5th Special Forces Group in Fort Campbell, uh, Kentucky back in 2002. This is a way to attach gear to your bag, to your kit, or, you know, strap it to a, maybe a roll bar in a Jeep or something. Uh, you've got different sizes here. You've got a small, and then you've got a uh, medium and a large, and then you have some extra straps here. Essentially, you've got a kind of a little like T crossbar and then a loop attached to it. So you put it around the gear and run the T through. You can see I've got a bunch of those small ones right around this. Move this out of the way and then I'll show you maybe one of to this medium sized one so you can see what that looks like. So there's a medium sized one. Again, you, you know, put a piece of gear in here, wrap this around it. And it's basically like a huge uh, bungee cord, but without the hooks, it's got these T, T size things. And they're also, I mean, these are the large ones. They're small enough. You could throw a bunch of these into your bag. And now you got, I mean, with all of these, look at this, that's a, a pile of them, but super small, whereas bungees are much bigger. And uh, yeah, so I think that's cool. Cool little option. That's going to be good for me when I think about uh, carrying like a, an ax or a hatchet, something like that on the outside of a pack. Now I've got a way to attach it a little bit more effectively. That's one of the challenges I found with molly webbing. There's sometimes good ways to attach gear and other times um, not so helpful. So depending on the pack you have, this could be a good option for you to uh, attach gear. Again, gear straps, S-T-R-A-P-Z. Next up here we have this Epic Bar. This is a protein bar, as you can see. It's kind of like beef jerky, but a little softer than that. This is wild boar with uncured bacon. They also have things like habanero cherry infused beef, so a pretty wide variety of that. Uh, all natural ingredients, um, grass-fed grass -fed animals, and gluten-free. So what I'm going to do is, I mean, this is what it looks like. It's nothing too fancy, but it does look like it's actually going to taste good. I just finished my morning coffee, so what I'm going to do is roll in some footage and a little bit of me actually eating one of these. Uh, Spec Ops sent me another one to kind of test out and saw, see what I think of it. So let's roll in that footage now to see what I actually think about how this thing tastes. Here's the Epic Bar. So let's open this up. We're going to use our knife to do so. Definitely softer, I can tell you already, definitely softer than your average like beef jerky. Tastes like it got some sort of berries or something in it. See those little spots? I don't know if that's a berry or what it is. Let me see. I'll tell you one thing, as soon as I bite into it, you know when you eat something you're like, yeah, that's got all kinds of processed stuff in it. This definitely does not taste taste like that. Definitely when they say when they say this is made of natural ingredients, it, it tastes like that when you first bite it. See that? I don't even know what that is. Looks like it's some sort of like maybe it's like a little cranberry or something like that. One little thing I have just with food is that I don't like to mix my like like when people put fruit on salad, that's not a fruit salad. So I got lettuce and tomatoes and then somebody puts cranberries on it. That's just not my thing. So putting some sort of little berry thing in there, I think that's what that is. Yes, I just read the uh, ingredients there, and it does have dried cranberries. So it's good enough that I'm eating it. I'm not like totally disgusting, but I prefer not to have that in this. But still, overall, quite good, quite good. Pretty impressed. Last piece of gear here is definitely the biggest thing. This is what they call, it says vest tactical here, load carrying. This is used by uh, the British military. Tons and tons and tons of pockets on this. Uh, one thing that's cool about this is that if you're headed into the woods, even just for a day out, maybe it's camping, hiking, first of all, you can take off as many pockets you want or put as many as you want on, which is cool. And then you can just store your gear in here. So as, if you have you know, not a ton of gear, you can store it in these pockets um, as, as far as like size-wise gear. You can store a ton of gear, just it can't be you know something that's six feet long or something. But anyhow, um, so you can wear this, and I've seen guys who've built vests that are essentially bug out vests or survival vests. You know, so they keep something like this in the back of their car, bam, you throw it on, and then you have all your different gear there in the pocket. So you can see, you know, pouch, 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 pouch. On the inside, there's actually a zipper here and a zipper here, so you can get into an internal pocket um, as well. I think this is a pouch here too, isn't it? Yeah, actually, it's more, just more space for 
uh, Molly webbing. And let's flip it over real quick. On the back, you can see another two on the side here, lots of attachment options, another pouch on the back. And this is made so you can actually put a hydration bladder on the back as well. So again, this is a, a vest that you can use for a wide variety of applications. I like the concept of something like this. Um, if your gear, again, isn't too large that it's not gonna fit in these pouches, but to keep something like this in a trunk with all your gear in it. So if it's like, I gotta grab something and go, yeah, backpack's good, but this is another way to do it. All that gear right on you, organized into tons of different pouches. And uh, yeah, you get your hook and loop, keeping that under control, but you got your um, your grab handle here. So that's originally made, you know, to if you had to pull somebody out of the way, out of harm's way, but you could certainly just use that to grab the bag. And then uh, you have all your gear. Lots of attachment points here, bungee, molly, shock cord. And even within the vest, as I'm thinking about it, you know, you look at the shock cord, you can remove the shock cord uh, and use it for something else. Remove that shock cord and use it for something else. Take the pouch off and use it for something else. You don't have to keep everything attached to the vest all the time. That was the Spec Ops Global from June 2016. And two things, let's hear in the comments, uh, what was your favorite item and why was it your favorite item? So leave a comment down in the comment section, tell us those two things, your favorite item and why it's your favorite item. The other thing I wanna tell you is that as of July 2016, they're gonna be making some changes to the boxes. So in each box you're gonna get uh, military, first responder, and tactical gear, and it's going to be based around kind of a theme or a particular loadout, particular kit concept. So they're making some changes to the boxes based on the feedback they've been getting from viewers and also from people who've subscribed to the boxes. So uh, cool that they're willing to get that feedback and make changes, and I look forward to, uh, to seeing what they're going to be doing in the months to come. All right, once again, down in the uh, comment section below, your favorite item and why it's your favorite item. And uh, as always, more videos coming soon. Thanks for checking this one out. Take care.